Hi everyone, I hope you all are doing well and keeping safe. In this video, we will be discussing about the digital twin based on Acrom's One Degree of Freedom copter and it's working. Let me begin by explaining what exactly is a digital twin. A digital twin can virtually represent a problem so that a solution can be devised and tested in the program rather than in the real world. This could be any machinery, a jet engine, a race car, or even wind farms. It basically predicts how a product will perform. Nowadays, these virtual models have become a staple in modern engineering across a wide range of industries to enhance technology trends, prevent failures in machines, test prototypes, and of course, save a ton load of time and money. Fun fact, it was actually NASA who first embraced the digital twin concept to create digital simulations of space capsules and crafts for testing. Since then, the concept has been used in an ever-growing array of industrial applications and processes. The 1D of Copter has been designed to simplify the intelligent control strategy of flight systems, flight dynamics, and enables users to experience the fundamental concepts of quadcopters, rockets, hovercrafts, and underwater vehicles. To explain its working in short, Acrom's Arduino base control system is used to control the 1D of Copter. The DC motor is located on one side of the balancing beam, and the balancing block is located on the other side of the beam. The encoder is placed in the center of the bar for position reading. When the user provides an angular input, the propeller rotates, a lift force is generated, and the balance beam moves along the pitching axis until it reaches the given tilt angle. Our digital twin leverages co-simulation methods with geometry-based 3D CAD tools and system modeling approaches to replicate the physical device. With this project, you'll be able to understand the main topics of control engineering, such as system modeling, linear control system design, and simulation with the help of Alter Activate and Alter Inspire Motion. With the digital twin, you can control the real model or visualize the simulation digitally if the hardware is inaccessible. The Alter Inspire platform includes a powerful, intuitive, and yet user-friendly environment for investigating the motion of moving parts. Here you can see our model is put together with joints, rigid bodies, and an actuator. In Inspire, we can visualize this motion and the varying outcomes with varying inputs. Instead of using an encoder to measure the angle, we have an angle measuring tool in Inspire to calculate the angle. And an actuator force is used to replicate the lift force generated by the propeller. After the motion analysis is done, you can export an MDL file. This file will be used to co-simulate with Activate. Of course, you can hide the actuator if you'd like. Now you can click on the Run icon to run the simulation. After the motion analysis is done, you can export an MDL file. This file will be used for co-simulation with Activate. Moving on to Alter Activate, this is the control system of the digital twin. The user provides an angular input and the fan rotates with a varying RPM or a varying actuator force to tilt to the given angle. And you can see that the encoder or the angular measure acts as a feedback system. We have used the same controller as that of Acrom's real model. In the plant superblock, we have the choice to choose between three plants, the real model, the transfer function, and co-simulation with Inspire. The real model plant can be used only if the hardware is available. So if we choose to select the transfer function, we would first need to obtain the model of the system. This can be done by applying the Laplace transform to the moment equation of the copter in order to calculate the transfer function or TF of the model. The function of the TF is to replicate the behavior of the real or co-simulation model. This is a faster method for testing or modifying the control system without actually running the core simulation several times, which could take a couple of minutes for each run. So let us try to set an angle for the copter and run the simulation. Click on the run icon and enter 2 in the dialog box to select the transfer function plot. This only takes a few seconds and now we can view the generated plot of the angle in radians. Coming to the most interesting part, co-simulation with Inspire. 
and activate just like the other two cases, the angular inputs are converted into PWM, that is pulse width modulation, and then into force. This force is fed into the INSPIRE model, which in turn gives angular values as the output. Double click the motion solve block and upload the MDL file that we exported from Alter INSPIRE. And save the output MRF file into the results folder. Go ahead and run the simulation. Enter 3 in the dialog box and click OK. This may take a minute or so. Now basically what's happening is that we can control the 1DF copter through Activate while Inspire visually represents the outcome of the copter's motion. We can view the plot and you can see that it's almost the same as the plot from the transfer function. View the animation in the Hyperview player, load our MRF file from the results folder and click on play. Try running the simulation with different angles and view the results. You will observe that the balancing beam oscillates a bit just before it reaches its final position. Remember that the limits are between the range of minus 60 to 60 degrees. I hope this video helped. Thank you for watching.